I am in the most uncomfortable place right now. I have to sit up like this, pressing my head against the back between the glass and the head press because this light is a little bit further back. So in order to actually see my face, I need to press myself back up. But I'm on the road again, as we do, as a family who travels a lot. And I didn't watch most of this Canucks game. In fact, I only saw a few minutes. But that doesn't change the fact that the results are incredibly important here. Now, I didn't watch this game, but that still doesn't deter me from acknowledging how important this is. It doesn't matter how good they played. It doesn't matter how bad they played. It doesn't matter. Because what does matter is the fact that the Canucks getting a win today against the Avalanche shows that this team knows how to compete when the going gets tough. In fact, we've seen that over the past few games. There were many games in this recent four-game losing stretch that they probably should have won one way or another, but didn't end up doing so. This time, against the Colorado Avalanche on home ice, they get it done. They shut them down in the third period. Zero goals against in the final 20 minutes of the game. And it's a 6-3 win in what was probably the most important game this season. The most important lead that they had into a third period. The most important final 20 minutes of a game they have played in years, pretty much. There hasn't been a game that has been this important in such a long time. And I think anybody who's a Canucks fan who's been following this team over the past few years can understand that. Things kick off really nice and early as JT Miller is out here. He comes in, nice little feed out there, sets up the guy in front, it's Troy Stetcher. He shoots one, it's one nothing. Then just a little bit later, Petey, he's got a whole bunch of time and space and he sets one up for JT Miller. He throws it to the cross crease. It's like a video game goal that I would usually score in NHL 20. Very, very straightforward goal, but then the Colorado Avalanche, they bounced back. And they got themselves on the board and they showed us, hey, this is why they're one of the best teams in the league, even without all their star players, even without Kale McCarr, who indeed was missing this game. A lot of people were joking around saying, oh, McCarr isn't gonna play because who knows, maybe him and Hughes will fight out there for the Calder. That would actually be pretty cool. A boxing match, one-on-one, -on -one, winner gets the Calder, but that didn't happen here today because Makar was out. Hughes was in, though. He didn't get any points. And another returnee to the Vancouver Canucks, it was Tyler Myers, who actually came back. And just from the audible experience I had listening to Brendan Batchelor on the radio, had one or two really, really good plays that kind of saved the game. He had a play where he kind of let his man go, which set up a goal in front. I believe it was the game tying goal that the Avalanche scored. But in general, Myers in the last 20 minutes proved to be the best Myers, probably one of the best Myers we've seen in a period for the Vancouver Canucks thus far. But this Canucks game was back and forth. Eventually, it's the Zach attack who comes in here. He gets himself a goal. Then Antoine Roussel gets himself a really nice one as he's just standing out there in front of the net. It's thrown over to him by Gaudette, I believe, and he pots one in. But then the Avalanche tied it, and it was 4-4, Four, or excuse me, it was 3-3 for a while. Actually, I think I got my timeline mixed up. I think the Roussel goal came after that, but Nevertheless, it doesn't take away from the point that the Colorado Avalanche were in a position where they did indeed come over here. It was 3-3 for a moment, but then, yeah, that's how it went. It was the Antoine Roussel goal that put the Canucks up 4-3. Then, once that third period started, people were like, yeah, this is the most important third period the Canucks have played all season. Because if they blow this one, they're going to be out of the playoffs still, because they were out of the playoffs before this game started. They're still going to be tied with those other teams below them. And Minnesota and Winnipeg would just be chilling in the wildcard spots straight up just ahead of Vancouver. And that was something that Canucks fans were saying, OK, this team needs to show us what they're made of. This team needs to take a step back, separate themselves from all the losses they've had over the past few days, and show us what they're made of that this is a playoff team, that this is a team that should be able 
to get back into that spot. And what do you know? They hold him off for a while. The Zach attack gets another goal. Second goal of the game for him, Zach McEwen, AHL, Utica Comets call up. And then Tanner Pearson gets the insurance goal from Louis Erickson. He's got 21 on the year. Tanner Pearson does, not, not Erickson, really not Erickson. But ultimately it's a six to three win. Thatcher Demko, he made like 20-something saves. I don't have the number in front of me right now because, you know, America, not too much data over here. But still, he was solid in this one just based off of what I've heard. And the Vancouver Canucks showed up to play against one of the best teams in the league. They played a full 60 minutes and they showed how they're able to bounce back when things don't go their way. So ultimately, it's the first win in a long time, and this one puts them back into the playoff spot. They're tied with the Winnipeg Jets in points, but they have games in hand. So they're technically in the first wildcard spot. Winnipeg gets knocked down to the second wildcard spot, and Minnesota gets taken out of the playoffs, just based off of how things are going today. Now, the Anaheim Ducks, they won a game, so that changes up the Pacific Division, but like, no one really cares. Anaheim's at the bottom. They beat Toronto, though, so that was really interesting. But that kind of wraps up this video here. I know Clay Emu is not going to be making a post-game vlog, he said so on Twitter, because he's got work, I believe. So I'm here making the car vlog for Clay. So I hope you enjoyed this video, so with our show on the i9. Comment down below everything that you think, everything that absolutely is just needing to be said right now because there's a lot and I know everybody is passionate about this team as much as I am so please comment down below in the comments and bye